memory management colon concept concepts spent worth spending 10 minutes on. Um, if you look online at like, if you're, if you have an iOS interview coming up for like a iOS engineering at, at a big tech company and you hop online, um, and you say like, what kind of questions are they going to ask me? You're going to see a very long list of, uh, like sort of these pop quiz type questions that, uh, a recruiter or, um, an interviewer might throw out at the beginning of an interview to help you warm up and then also kind of serve as a filter again, uh, for, for like uh, candidates that really have little to no iOS experience, which for certain roles is not an issue if they specify that you don't, you know, if, if, if they're willing to like teach iOS specifically, but then, you know, you need like a solid foundation of um, like computer science fundamentals, right? Like data structures and algorithms. Um but you will see memory management questions pop up all over the place. And part of the reason for that is because, um, well, well, one, it's a function of the, the type of question. It's a really question easy. It's a really easy type of question to ask um, with a very discreet, correct or incorrect answer. Additionally, because they, they, these sort of pop quiz type questions tend to pop up at all throughout all phases of the interview process, um, the people who are filtered out by HR, like looking at just a phone screen to see if it's a good fit, uh, are asked those questions. And so they may post those online. Uh, and then they might be posted, posted at like the, uh, the first technical phone screen or the, the, the like the, the first technical, uh, like, um, data structure algorithm question. If it's an iOS specific one, they, they might lead in with those a couple times, uh, or a, a couple questions right at the start. Um, which means the, anyone who is filtered out there or who makes a pass might post those questions online. So like, so, so part of the reason you see those po popping up so frequently, my hypothesis is that it's, it's sort of this dual, um, they're easy questions to ask. And since everybody's asked these like pop quiz type questions, like there's more opportunities for them to be, um, uh, seen by candidates and then, and then like that information passed on to others who are searching for it online. So I don't think there's anything particularly special about memory management or particularly challenging. Um, so what do you need to know about memory management? Uh, let's, let's talk about when you'll be asked about it, which I've kind of already discussed a bit, what they'll ask and just some, a few ways to maybe be a little extra to, to, uh, put a little flourish at the end of your question uh, without, uh, you know, stepping on your own toes, uh, providing like an overly detailed, possibly incorrect answer. I, I found that over explaining things is probably a bigger problem than just letting the uh, interviewer make those cognitive leaps themselves when you're describing something. Uh, if you don't know it as, if you don't happen to know it as well as, um, as you think you might. Uh, and I am speaking from personal experience on that one. Uh, any, door close. Okay, cool. So, um, <clears throat> like I said earlier, what sort of questions will we see regarding memory management? Um, almost exclusively all the questions I've run into, uh, I, I, I tend not to ask them as an interviewer. Uh, I don't find them very interesting, but uh, as an interviewee, yeah, it's, it's these like iOS pop quiz questions. Um, it is possible that like you could be presented with a piece of code uh, and the, the interviewer might say like, what's the issue with this code and might give you five or 10 minutes to figure out what it is in the event that it's related to like the, the, the issues related to memory management. Um, seems like a reasonable question. It just... I think because of the like the amount of legwork you need to like have that piece of code prepared um, beforehand, uh, it, I, I don't know. I I've never seen it, even though it seems like a reasonable question. But anyways, let me kind of keep chugging along here. So I will take a second and just ask, how is memory managed in iOS? Does anybody want to throw a hand up, talk, share, or just write in the chat? ARC, perfect. And ARC stands for? 
automatic reference counting. Uh, can you explain, if, if I was the interviewer, if you said ARC, um, I'd say, great. Can you explain what that is? Um, if I was the interviewee, I would probably say ARC, which means automatic reference counting. And then I would just start explaining uh, where the number of references to an object is incremented or decremented for the purpose of retaining that object in memory for only as long as another object references it. Yeah, perfect, Pranav, that, that's exactly it. Runtime tracks number of references for every created object and deallocates the object with zero reference count. Yeah, perfect. Uh, if you say, if you just say arc and then kind of provide that, your interpretation of the definition, um, pretty strong, uh, pretty strong response. Uh, you could also um, get questions about what is a re retain cycle? Anybody, this is a pretty quick one. So I'll, I'll wait a minute or two and see if anyone can throw that out in the chat. Additionally, if anyone, if you guys have any questions, um, feel free to throw them into the Q and A. Uh, and then when we have like a down minute or uh, when they are, if, if, if I have these sort of pop quiz type questions, um, happy to answer them. Okay, so two, so what is a retain cycle? Two objects holding a reference to each other. Another definition, two objects uh, referencing each other so they never get deallocated from memory. Yes, that never getting deallocated from memory is, is the key part of that. Another, um, another uh, what, what, what is it, a synonym for that or another term would be uh, like a memory leak, right? Um, Tain cycle memory leak. Um, yeah, so when two or more objects hold a reference um, more specifically, a strong reference uh, to each other, such that their associate reference counts never reach zero and therefore are never released or deallocated from memory. Um, how can a retain cycle be addressed? Uh, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait here. This is a real, uh, well, I don't have to tell you how easy it is. Not using string references. Oh, strong references. Okay, yeah. So the QA. Strong, got it. Thumbs up and I'm just gonna dismiss and dismiss. Cool, perfect. Uh, make the owner reference and the owned reference object. Okay, so the solution provided by Pranav, um, make the owner reference the owned object with a weak reference. Yeah, so, so um, yeah, obviously just in short, specify one of the references as, as weak. Um, yeah, you'd, you'd want the one that's gonna be in memory. Like, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, before I give it uh, later questions away, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll not expound on that yet. So what is a weak reference? More strong, if that, if you feel like that is an easier thing to describe. Just don't increment the reference count. Strong does affect the reference count. Perfect. Yeah, that's actually probably a better explanation than mine. Yeah, like a weak reference holds the reference value only as long as the object strong reference count is greater than zero. Um, I actually like a Pranav's explanation better. Weak ref references don't increment the reference count. Strong references do affect the reference count. Great. Um, so a uh, bonus, is there anywhere in code that retain cycles tend to occur? Okay, Pranav got that already. Uh, one of them, there's others. Child view controllers, delegates. Does it have a count? Yep, cool. 
that like that there's another one that um some yes async calls com uh I, I, in general completions right um so so yeah the first one that someone mentioned i think pranav was the like implementations of the delegate pattern so here we have an example of some protocol that holds a reference to the view and then might handle some stuff or something like that right um now a class like let's say this leaky view which uh, uh is a ui view let's say it has a delegate which is some view delegate right in this implementation um they these are both strong references right so in order to fix this uh we might we 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 would probably want the the view uh to to reference the delegate as weak um and once something is weak then it has to be an optional um once once a variable is weak it has to be an optional such that like like because it, it's because it's not guaranteed that the um that the uh the the uh, variable won't become nil right um we also could have uh made the the uh, the way to do it probably would have in this case been to make the view weak in the delegate um that's probably a better way to do it anyways let's keep moving on uh the other place they tend to occur is closures or completions um so let's say in this example this object has a strong reference uh to the closure and since we used self in the closure block the closure then creates a strong reference to the object itself um in order there's there's two ways that we could address this um can anyone shout those out? Weak self. Do you know the other one? Optional self. Yeah, so, um, yeah, what I'm seeing a lot of people write, uh, you know, weak self in the closure, which, yep, uh, adding that weak self. Uh, and then at that point, self would be an optional. So we need to um, do that optional chaining in order if we're going to reference that or we're going to need to unwrap it or something like that. However you deal with options, it's fine. Um, the other way to deal with it is using the unowned self. Um, it just, you, you have to be a little extra careful when you're using unowned since that um, if the object has already been deallocated, when the closure is called, uh, it'll, it'll crash. So you really only use unowned self when you are absolutely guaranteed that um, the object would not have been deallocated prior to the completion being called. Do we have any uncertainties or questions about those examples or anything we've talked about memory management? 